I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we join a fine dining chef at his Upper West Side apartment slash culinary laboratory. And we tour this bright and airy West Village duplex with designer Libby Langdon. Plus we are with fashion designer Betsy Johnson at her vibrant Malibu trailer. But first we join Sonia Morgan of Bravo's Real Housewives of New York City to show us around her elegant Upper East Side townhouse. This home is where all the magic happens, and I can't wait to show you around. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. We have got a great show this week, highlighting homes filled with comfort and style and plenty of personality. And we are getting started with Sonia Morgan, one of the stars of Bravo's Real Housewives of New York City. She shows us around her elegant Upper East Side townhouse where she lives, works, and of course, entertains. Take a look. Hello, I'm Sonia Morgan. Welcome to my home on the Upper East Side. This home is where all the magic happens and I can't wait to show you around. Let's go. This is my garden. I wanted to start here because it's one of my favorite places. It's a Shangri-La from my busy lifestyle. And then I can just come here and have peace and quiet and sit and read or feed the fish. And also this can be quite a busy area because I entertain. I can have up to 250 people on this floor alone. was built in 1890 and it's one of the last Gilded Age townhouse blocks left in the city. So the recent renovation that we did here was to lighten it up, brighten it up. I was careful to keep some of the very fine details such as the Parquet de Versailles floor hand painted, the original fireplace fronts, the staircase. I just don't want to let those go. This floor from the entrance to the garden is primarily where I do entertain, but after cocktails and canapes, we move upstairs to the formal dining room. If you could be a fly on the wall here, the dinner parties I've had, you'd be amazed. This beautiful break front I found at an antique store in Stanford. It's perfect because it's very narrow and it doesn't take up too much space, yet it allows me to house all my china. The wallpaper in this dining room is very special. It's hand-painted silk by Gracie Studio. And look at this, an original fireplace in marble. The goal of this kitchen was to bring the outside in with these huge open windows, beautiful greenery coming in, and I chose the green marble to complement the colors of outdoors. I love to cook and entertain, so it was important to me to have a chef's kitchen, including my Viking range, which gets a lot of use. I went with the mahogany in the kitchen just to continue the theme of dark woods throughout the house. And this is my boudoir. I designed this four poster bed. It's very luxurious in the fact that this whooshed fabric gives you great ambiance and beautiful lighting. And this area is where I keep my everyday bags. It may be a hodgepodge, but for me, I like them at my fingertips so I can dress and go. This is just another cozy little nook for me to hang out and read a book. And of course, the walls in my room had to be lined in silk. So this area is one of my favorite areas. It's my dressing room. And if I have friends or family over, we all have plenty of seating, a couch, couple chairs, and we can just play and dress up. In fact, I'm wearing Sonia Morgan New York right now. And this is my bathroom. I have a steam shower and a footed tub. And of course, vanity is every woman's necessity. Thank you for joining me on this tour of my townhouse on the Upper East Side. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. Stick around because just after the break, we are with the one, the only, Betsy Johnson. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Now we're in Malibu with legendary fashion designer Betsy Johnson. Betsy's home is filled with her hallmark aesthetic. A dash of punk, a bit of kitsch, and of course, a whole lot of color. Take a look. That's my hello, welcome split. Welcome to my Malibu little pink dollhouse. Okay, watch out for the LA traffic. I love trucks. Here we go, sideways into my front door. The first thing you'll notice about my house is it's very cluttered. Some people cannot stand to be in my house because too much is going on. And that's what I love about it, that it's roses on roses, on pictures, on tchotchkes, on memories. It is like being with family and friends when I'm in my house, because I'm usually alone. <laughs> This is my dining area, where I don't dine. I put my makeup on here. I do my design work here. But the best thing about this place is what's out there. I have an incredible view of the mountains. I mean, it's just the best view in the world. A major important part to my house every day, I gotta have flowers. I just, I, I'm not happy without flowers. Usually where I put them all is in the kitchen. Here's my kitchenless kitchen. I don't shop, I don't cook, and I don't entertain. <laughs> All I needed in my kitchen were a couple of shelves because I knew that my kitchen is all about displaying all my favorite kitchen stuff. All my plates, all my bowls, all my tchotchkes. None of them work. I mean, none of them are holding anything. One of my favorite display areas, one of my biggest inspiration are my little children's clothes. I mean, don't ask. <laughs> If I do want to do something, I need my sewing machine and I need my sewing room. I never wanted to be a fashion designer. All I wanted to do when I was a little kid is sew. I always made what I wanted to wear. That's a secret. My love of sewing turned me into who I am. I think if you do what you loved doing as a little kid, that could turn into what you do in life. This is my bedroom, the place where I crash. It's my favorite wallpaper, my favorite pictures, and my favorite view of the mountains and the ocean. And the bonus is my bathroom. Oh. Hello! <laughs> Actually, my favorite room in the house because of this. My tub with these beautiful brass bathtub fixtures. I'm a happy camper. I'm living in a pink house in my pink bathroom. We're going to go have some pink champagne and see my backyard. Come on! Ta-da! Welcome to my deck of mountains and ocean and sun. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed my little pink palace. Cheers. <laughs>
right off the foyer is the den, and we needed it to double as a guest room. So I designed these doors that have a beautiful milk glass that shears so it lets light in, but there's privacy when somebody's staying here. It's not a huge space, but a good tip if you have a small area is incorporating contrast using light and dark. Here you can see I used high gloss white cabinetry and shelving in contrast to the dark stone on the back wall. It adds depth and dimension and it actually makes the space feel a little bit bigger. At the end of the foyer is this beautiful bar, and I use this Marmara stone, and so often it's installed with the grain going horizontally, but I wanted to install it vertically so the pattern continued down onto the counter. So a tip for you at home, if you're installing some tile, consider turning it vertically. It could give you a fresh, modern new perspective. The client wanted a sleek, clean kitchen, high gloss lacquer, no hardware. If you have larger appliances like a refrigerator or a freezer and you still don't want hardware, these recess poles are a great idea. You can easily grab on, but it's still flush with the door and looks clean and beautiful. And with an island this big, you have enough room for everyone. I'll have a glass of rosé. The focal point for the living area is this beautiful fireplace with this soft, subtle, gray, natural stone. The thing that keeps it from feeling overwhelming or too big in the space is this setback and this cutout. Also, by having contrast on the hearth below, it really adds depth and dimension. For this living space, I wanted to use one long sectional. It was gonna maximize seating and keep the area from feeling cluttered. Also having an open area below lets light and air pass through and it keeps it feeling light and easy. And keeping with the theme of light and airy, a glass tabletop is a great choice. The trick is make sure you have a shelf below where you can put all of your stuff. We want it to be beautiful, but it's gotta be functional. For the main bedroom, I wanted to create a peaceful, serene retreat. The challenge was there were windows on the walls where the bed was gonna go. The key is to choose a bed with a low headboard. The other thing that I did was I framed the window with hanging drapes that actually stack on the wall rather than inside the window. That still allows natural light in and visually it tricks the eye and makes it seem like the window is wider than it really is. But before you end your day, let me show you something really amazing. How is this for fabulous in New York City? Not one terrace, but two with fabulous views. One for lounging and hanging out in the morning, and one for entertaining cocktails and dinner at night. And yes, one of the terraces even has a tree. I'm so glad I could give you a tour of my client's special space that's perfect for entertaining family and friends and enjoying all the best that New York City has to offer. Happy designing. Coming up just after the break, we are cooking with this stylish chef on the Upper West Side. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're on the Upper West Side with Chef Rose Traore. Rose has worked in some of New York's most prestigious restaurants. Now this fashion forward culinary talent takes us inside his own home, which he treats as his lab and test kitchen to share delicious dishes with the world. Take a look. What's going on everyone? My name is Rose Traore and I'm a chef in New York City. Welcome to my home on the Upper West Side. Not only is this my sanctuary, but this is exactly where all of the magic happens. And I can't wait to give you a look. All right, so this is a New York City apartment, which means every space needs to count, including the entrance. So I painted the wall black because I wanted the entrance to be a little more dramatic and it makes this beautiful piece here pop. And at the same time, I was able to fit a bar cart in this small area. So when my guests come in, I want them to be able to see this beautiful piece and also enjoy a cocktail, whatever they want. All right, so speaking about dramatic, I love this light because it just gives you that dark glow before you enter the bright living room. You know, my whole approach 
to everything is simplicity is key. So when I picked my sofa, I knew that I wanted it to be, you know, chic and sleek, but still comfortable. One thing that I keep in mind when I'm purchasing furniture is to make sure that they serve more than one purpose. Now, as far as my coffee table, I have a glass top to simply just view my books, but also be able to enjoy a good cup of coffee. And then for the dining table, I wanted to get something that I could use for my desk, but also be able to entertain my guests when you know they come over for dinner, for lunch, and you know get a little groovy. And I love mirrors because you're able to see yourself, see the environment you're in, and it keeps you in your toes. All right, so now as far as lighting, very important. I wanted it to still be simple, but still have that slickness behind it. And that's why I put up these two sconces and they do the work. Now, obviously, when I'm having guests over, I'm not ordering out. I'm cooking it myself. So with that being said, let's get into it. Here we are in my kitchen, which is my lavatory. It's small, but effective. What makes a good kitchen for me at home is one, make sure you have a really solid stove top. I'm a tall guy, so I wanted to set my pots and pans nice and high so it's easy for me to grab, just like that. I mean, I've worked at some of the best restaurants in the world, but what I really fell in love with was when I was able to connect with my guests on a whole different level. And you know, the thing that I love about food is that it connects us. And I truly love being in this position because I'm able to make people happy and to just share that knowledge that I've been able to experience for the past 10 years. For a light lunch, seafood is always a plus. So I'm gonna be making my spice harissa shrimp. Now, some of the ingredients that we'll be using consists of some garlic, some harissa paste, we have some butter, a little thyme, and some basil to finish it off with. And let's not forget, we have some baguette to just soak up some of that broth to just enjoy. First thing we're gonna add is our garlic, seasoned with a little bit of salt, white wine, and we're gonna add in our harissa. Now you wanna make sure your sauce is out of right consistency before you add in your shrimp so you're not overcooking them. I mean, plating food for me, it definitely affects the taste because you eat with your eyes. You just wanna make it look good, like a home. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed my home. I enjoyed cooking for you. Time to eat. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we explore this sophisticated apartment in the Flatiron District. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in the Flatiron District at this unique pied de terre with interiors by globe trotting British designer Alexander Doherty. Check it out. My name is Alexander Doherty and I am a British designer based here in New York City and I'd like to welcome you to one of my most recent projects here in Madison Square Park. So generally I like to bring a transitional approach to most of my projects. I like to mix pieces from the 20th, 19th, even 18th century with contemporary pieces, giving it an eclectic look. This is a pied-à-terre apartment for my client. We wanted to bring an international flair to it and make it feel very specific for him and individual. So as you come through the gallery, you come out into this very large open space, which comprises of the living room, the dining room, and in fact, the kitchen. But the first thing that you're gonna see, or the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to walk to, are the windows, and see the spectacular view of Madison Square Park. The color of the walls, in fact, this is a color that the client has used in previous homes. But to change it up a little, we decided to really punch out the windows with this bright, almost kind of Chinese lacquer red. We extended the edges of the windows to make real window boxes to really emphasize the view. So to create this space, kind of almost like a circular space, I had two sofas made here in New York. We were able to find a great looking day bed, which we had reupholstered and refinished. And then I got my hands on this Italian bench from the 1940s, kind of closing off the space, but leaving it open at the same time. 
Here we are in the master bedroom and the first thing that you'll notice is that we have completely strayed away from the very saturated color palette. He insisted that his master bedroom be a calm oasis to get a good night's sleep here in New York City. But the strong pieces in here are the desk, the desk chair, the artwork, and the nightstands. And part of the master suite is of course the master bathroom. We added a little color, a little flavor of our own in the lighting and the back of the pocket door. I hope you've really enjoyed visiting this space today as much as I have in showing it to you. We've got a real color story going on here. Change the space from being your generic white box into something very personal. So I hope that this gives you courage to go ahead and do the same thing. And until next time, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?